Marco Asensio has been one of Real Madrid's most underrated players this season. His story is one of resilience, with him having to overcome personal tragedy like losing his mother in his teenage years to then becoming a solid player for the biggest club in the world. Now with him wearing that legendary white jersey, his remarkable vision and flair made him one of the best young talents in football and he was rated quite highly. However, he faced even more hardship like him tearing his ACL which threatened his career. However, he bounced back, defying the odds and gradually regained form to become an important piece for Real Madrid once again. So. How did Asensio overcome so many obstacles to continue being a top talent in football? Well, let's take a look at the rise, fall, and rise again of Marco Asensio. Marco was born on January 21st, 1996 in a city called Palma on the Spanish side of Mallorca. He was born to a Dutch mother and Spanish father, and fun fact, his first name Marco was given to him because of the legendary Dutch footballer Marco van Basten. Just like his name, Marco Asensio always had a talent for football, and he was good at it at a young age. Then when he was nine, he joined the Mallorca Academy, despite having growth deficiencies in his knees, which gave him a hard time training and recovering. On top of this, when Marco Asensio was 11 and still in the Mallorca Academy, his mother sadly passed away due to cancer, and this obviously broke him. However, even while battling grief, he still had the motivation to fulfill his dreams of being a pro footballer and continue to play for the Mallorca Academy. He felt like he had to make it, because when he was younger, his mother and him met Florentino Perez, the president of Real Madrid, while he was just chilling on a yacht, and Asensio's mom asked for a picture for his son. After that, Asensio's mom told Florentino Perez that one day her son will play for Real Madrid, and in high Insight, she got that prediction spot on. Plus, if you ever wonder why Asensio points to the sky whenever he celebrates for Real Madrid, it's because of his mother. Anyways, let's stop skipping around and go back to Asensio's past while he was still with Mallorca. He impressed a lot for the academy that in the 2013-14 campaign, he was finally playing for the first team while they were still in the second division of La Liga. Then after that campaign, Real Madrid reached an agreement in principle to sign Asensio, and in December, they agreed to a six-year deal for 3.9 million euros. However, Real Madrid will allow Asensio to stay at Mallorca on loan for the remainder of of the season in the second division, and Asensio managed to get 6 goals and 8 assists in 36 games. Remember, Asensio was only around 18 or 19 years old at this time, so stats like this for a teenager is really good. Anyways, before the 2015-16 season, Marco Asensio spent the entire preseason with Real Madrid. However, he was deemed not ready by the coaches of the first team and was sent out on loan to Espanyol in La Liga for the entire season. Now for Espanyol, he did really well, with him getting 4 goals and 15 assists in 37 games. Getting 15 assists in your first season in top 5 football is insane. And it was pretty clear that Asensio could be a top playmaker on the wing. He also scored a few goals, like I said, which showed that he does have the capabilities of scoring, but it was clear his primary thing was providing for the strikers. Or so we thought. That's because in the 16-17 campaign, Marco Asensio finally got a shot with the Real Madrid first team, and his stats for the season completely switched. In the 38 games he played for Madrid, he got 10 goals and 4 assists. Getting more goals than assists was totally unexpected for Asensio, especially after that season with Espanyol. Regardless, Asensio scored some really important goals for Real Madrid Madrid in his first season for the club, which elevated him to be one of Real Madrid's and Spain's most talented players at the time. Literally, in his first professional game for Madrid, he played in the UEFA Super Cup game against Sevilla, where he played the full 120 minutes and scored a 25-meter rocket. What a way to kickstart your Real Madrid career. Then, in La Liga, he scored some important goals, like his goal against Real Sociedad to make sure Real Madrid got off to a good start in the season. Sadly, he then only managed to score two more times in the La Liga campaign, but in the Champions League, it was a different story, because Asensio was super important in this competition. In the Super 10's quarterfinal tie against Bayern Munich, Asensio was a key reason why Madrid got through due to his assist in a 2-1 away win in the first leg, and also his goal in the second leg being a huge reason why Madrid won 4-2 in extra time to go through. Then in the Champions League final against Juventus, Marco Asensio came off the bench and got himself a goal in the dying moments of the final, and this helped secure Real Madrid's 12th Champions League trophy in their history. So as we can see, Asensio's first season at Real Madrid wasn't super crazy in terms of goal contributions, but his vital goals and assists will be remembered due to how important they were in context. Then for the 17-18 season, Marco Asensio improved his stats for Real Madrid, with him getting 11 goals and 6 assists in 53 games, increasing his goal contributions compared to last season by 3. Now once again, Asensio might have not had the most mind-blowing stats, but he was gradually improving his game and was becoming an important player in the squad, with him scoring some important goals. For example, he scored Barcelona in a 3-1 win in the Supercopa de España, where he scored a rocket from 25 yards out. This guy Asensio just loves to score rockets, bruh. He also then scored in the second leg against Barcelona in the final as well, making sure Real Madrid humiliated humiliated Barcelona 5-1 on aggregate. Then against Real Betis in La Liga, he scored a brace in a 5-3 away win and also scored Real Madrid's 6,000 goal in the Spanish top division. Yeah, Asensio is forever going to be in Real Madrid's history. He also once again played an important role in the Champions League campaign for Madrid, with him getting another goal versus Bayern Munich, but this time in the semifinals to give Real Madrid the crucial away goal to help them go through to the final, where they ended up beating my club Liverpool 3-1 and won their 13th Champions League trophy. That final haunts me to this day, man. Watching those highlights again just continues to break my heart.
apart. Anyways, with these great performances for Real Madrid and the fact that Asensio was becoming the next big thing in Spanish football, he was obviously called up for the 2018 World Cup. However, he played a minimal role for Spain in the group stages, only making substitute appearances. However, in the round 16 game against Russia, he played 104 minutes and even got the assist for Spain's only goal of the match. However, Russia eliminated Spain in a major upset on penalties, and that was the end of Asensio's tournament. For the 2018-19 campaign, I'm not gonna lie, there isn't much to talk about for Asensio. It was just a stagnant season for him. In 44 games, he only got 6 goals and 9 assists, and that's honestly about it. It was just a disappointing season for Real Madrid, with them getting knocked out by Ajax in the round of 16. Even though Asensio played his part and got 2 goals between the 2 legs, Real Madrid also somehow ended up losing the UEFA Super Cup to Atletico Madrid 4-2, and finished 3rd place in La Liga, way behind 1st place Barcelona. Overall, just wasn't that good of a season for Real Madrid and Marco Asensio, and that's why the 1920 season was gonna be big for him to bounce back. However, something heartbreaking happened that really threatened whether he could continue playing normally on the pitch. That's because in a preseason match against Arsenal in July 2019, Asensio sadly tore his ACL. It was supposed to be a big season for Asensio, but now for a majority of it, he was set to be on the sideline. ACL injuries are extremely hard to recover from, especially if you're trying to get back to your normal playstyle, which made everybody unsure whether Asensio could return to his best self. Real quick before we talk more about Asensio's ACL injury, please remember to subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it and it means a lot, so thank you. Anyways, back to topic, with Asensio having a determined and resilient mentality, and also the fact that he's already faced many obstacles in his journey already, this is just another thing he would have to overcome. Then, almost immediately, he went to work to try to recover as efficiently and as fast as possible from the injury. He put in the time, especially at the gym and in the swimming pool, just to recover as fast as possible to see if he could play at least a little bit in the season. However, making it in time seemed to be impossible, unless? That's when COVID-19 plurged the planet and football was paused for three months. When football eventually came back, Marco Sensi was fit and ready to play for the final few games of the season. Now, obviously, his impact throughout the season was minimal, with him getting three goals and one assist in 10 games. However, in his first game back, he did manage to score one goal and get one assist in only 16 minutes against Valencia, which showed that maybe Asensio could return to his former self on the pitch. Not only that, with him playing the last few games, he was awarded a medal as Real Madrid went on to win La Liga for the 1920 season. However, even though Asensio was back with the main Real Madrid team, he didn't have a very good 2021 season. In 48 games for Real Madrid in that campaign, he only got seven goals and two assists, which is a huge decrease in output compared to his previous seasons at Real Madrid. And it's not like he wasn't getting any minutes either, because in La Liga, he started a majority of the games. It just seemed like Asensio couldn't return to his usual skillful self. Additionally, Real Madrid went trophyless this season, with them losing to Chelsea in the Champions League semifinal, losing out on the La Liga trophy by two points to City rival Atletico Madrid, losing to Atletico Bilbao in the Supercopa semifinals, and also somehow losing to City Alcoyano in the Copa del Rey, a third division Spanish side. How Real Madrid lost to a third division side, I will never know. But overall, it was a poor season for Real Madrid and a poor season for Asensio. It wasn't looking good for Asensio either, with people doubting whether he could return to his usual football style, as his market value dropped by around 50 million euros. Just to add cherry on the cake, Asensio wasn't even selected to be part of the Euro squad for Spain that summer, where Spain reached the semifinals of the tournament. Instead, he was released for the Spain Olympics team, where Asensio got a goal against Japan in the semifinals. However, Spain lost to Brazil in the finals of the Olympics, which saw Asensio have a trophyless season. However, people doubted Marco Asensio a little too soon, because he gradually got better in the 21-22 campaign. I mean, it wasn't his best, with him only getting 12 goals and 2 assists in 42 games. But he was gradually getting better and showing versions of his former self. Also, he got some important goal contributions in a very successful season for Real Madrid. In La Liga, he got his first senior hat trick against his former club Mallorca and helped Madrid defeat them 6-1 on the day. He also got some more crucial goals in La Liga, like his goal against Atletico, which helped Madrid beat their rivals 2-0, and also his solo goal against Granada helped Madrid get the victory 1-0. With these contributions, this helped Real Madrid win the 21-22 La Liga title. Then, in the Champions League, although he only scored one goal in that campaign this season, he still played a good amount of minutes in the competition and therefore helped Real Madrid go on their legendary run as they won their 14 Champions League title. So overall, although Asensio was not at his best yet, he was gradually getting better and it was clear to see. Now for the 22-23 season, yeah, it's safe to say Marco Asensio is back to his best. His injury issues aren't present anymore with him being available for every single Real Madrid game this season. Also in 50 games, he's gotten 12 goals and 8 assists, which means he's gotten 20 goal contributions, his best ever for Real Madrid. Yeah, Asensio definitely bounce back. He also played his part in La Liga as they battled but lost to Barcelona in the La Liga title race. And also, he played his role well in the Champions League for the most part, coming off the bench and scoring against Chelsea in the quarterfinals as an example. They did end up getting knocked out in the semifinals against City 5-1 on aggregate, but still, Asensio's done good. Plus, after missing out on Euro 2020 with Spain, he got called up to the World Cup with his impressive performances for Real Madrid. He also got himself his first World Cup goal as he scored in the 7-0 thrashing against Costa Rica, which is something Asensio is never going to forget for sure. Now, Marco Asensio is confirmed to be leaving Real Madrid on a free this summer, with a ton of Premier League clubs interested in
than signing him, and also PSG, where I could totally see him going because of the departure of Lionel Messi happening as well. But overall, with Asensio facing a ton of setbacks before his career started, and a huge injury setback in the middle of his Real Madrid career, it's safe to say that with his perseverance, Asensio bounced back and is now back to his best. You just love to see it. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And if you want to learn more about another superstar this season, Rafael Leao, you definitely want to check out this video here. You won't regret it.